Welcome to Section 5, Vet Setting Up in V-Ray. I've gone through and placed eight different cameras, and we're going to be rendering from camera 3. The first thing we want to set up is our lighting. Um, that way when we go in and we start setting down reflections and refractions, we have a more accurate um, idea of how they're going to be conveyed. The first thing we're going to do is override our material. So let's go into the Material Editor, open up a V-Ray material, oh, rename it, um, go down here and let's just go into Options and turn off Reflections and Refractions. Don't need to worry about that quite yet. Bring up our Render Dialog and under Global Switches we want to check Override Material and let's just instance this straight material we made in. So now when we do a render, the first thing we want to do when setting up lighting in V-Ray is to set up our radiance map. Um, that is going to create global illumination, which means uh, lighting that is coming from the environment as opposed to from a specific light. Uh, that's going to give us our soft fill and then it'll minimize the amount of work we have to do and raise the fidelity of our piece. There are many different ways to light scenes using V-Ray. I'm going to show you one approach with um, different variables that I've found that worked. Uh, if you really want to become familiar with V-Ray, it's a really good idea to go ahead and go through all the tutorials, read about it, figure out what each setting does, and get a good grasp because certain things are better for animating and certain are better for stills. Some will give you a lower rendering cost and I've seen many different approaches to creating beautiful scenes using this software. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to kind of plow through what settings I'm using to create this effect and uh, if you want to learn more then that'll have to be up to you. Let's go into our rendering options and go to our um, indirect illumination, turn this on, set the first bounce to a radiance map and the second bounce to none. Um, if you're finding that your scene is too dark, you can set this to any of these options and then go down and open up their lower thing and uh, mess with the bounces. So a slight amount more light would be one bounce. Obviously uh, default is set at 10, but we are not going to worry about that for the time being. Let's just set it to no secondary bounces. For rendering, I'm going to set this to low because we're just in the test phase right now. Let's go into V-Ray and go down to our environment turn on GI Environment Override, uh, which is going to give us our pervasive light. Uh, what this is tinted is what your scene will be tinted right now, although we are going to replace this slot with an HDRI image in a second. So that's good to know, but moot for the second, or for this situation. Go to Frame Buffer and enable built-in frame buffer. So now I'm going to go ahead and render this just to give you an idea of how our scene is coming along. As you can see, it's really dark, so um, we're going to go into our render setup and go to V-Ray, uh, Color Mapping, Exponential, and let's set our Dark Multiplier at 2 and our Bright Multiplier at 1.5. Um, what this does is it simulates the color correction dialog in our V-Ray. If you wanted to do it manually, you could turn these this curve up and this curve up so that it was doing a Bezier. But I'm just going to go ahead and reset our tangents because we are doing it through the, um, uh, the render setup. Uh, if you do want to do it through the corrections control though, make sure use color curve correction this button is actually set. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and render this and I will quickly show you the difference. And that's a lot better. We're getting more bounces into these dark areas and uh, you can see quite a bit more.
The next thing we're going to do is apply an HDRI image to our global illumination settings, which is going to take um, a high dynamic range image and use its color mapping instead of this light blue color. So it's going to use that to drive our ambient light. Um, for those of you who don't know what HDRI is, Google is a beautiful thing. So let's go in into our render setup and go into environment. Click here and select V-Ray HDRI. Um, open up the material editor and instance that onto an empty slot. Let's go in and set this to spherical environment and choose an image. I happen to have um, quite a few into this folder. I got them off the internet. So I'm just going to throw a few in and see what I like and I'll show you the images after I finish rendering them. I decided on a beach HDRI image. It gave the warmth of the sun while still leaving um, some cools and refractions from the blue of the sky. It's very dark in these shadowed areas though so I'm going to go into our render setup and throw a brute force um, GI engine into here it's automatically set to three secondary bounces which I'm good with. Let's go ahead and render that and you'll see that it really brings up the shadows so that we see a lot more detail in the distance. In fundamentals of color arrangement if you have a neutral color and you put it next to a black color that will suddenly pop and become a lot brighter. Because of this concept, we really want to make sure that our background is putting our scene in perspective for us when we're judging whether or not we like our lighting. Um, typically, uh, we would want to put this HDRI image and use this as the background, but since a beach wouldn't look very proper in a football stadium, I'm just going to throw a different map which matches the color spectrum. Let's name this Beach HDRI. And this one I'm going to name Reno HDRI. Let's go ahead and browse to that. And now I'm going to go into our environment. Instance this guy in. That's pretty dark. I'm going to raise its overall multiplier to 2. And let's go to viewport background. Use our environment background. And turn that guy on. Oftentimes, our background will not line up exactly as we would like it to. I'm going to hit Hide Unselected, and I definitely don't want these trees in the background. I'm going to rotate my HDRI around using horizontal rotation and vertical rotation. Let's just pause the video, and I will rotate until I get to a point where I'm happy. I hid the fence layer since we're going to be able to see through it and I'm very happy with this rotation. Now that we've got our indirect illumination set up pretty well, I'm going to go in and start affecting our direct lum illumination, aka our sun. We're going to imitate this under lights, pull down for V-Ray, and we'll just start with a V-Ray light. You can use this or a V-Ray sun. The difference is that a V-Ray light is an area light and a sun is a light which will um, was programmed to imitate the sun as closely as possible. The lower you have it on the horizon, the more it will imitate the colors of a sunset. And the higher you have it, the sharper the shadows become. Placing your lights is really just a matter of understanding the pull-down menu and experimentation. Our multiplier is going to be our light output. I'm going to bring that down to 5 to start with. And we do want to cast shadows. We don't need it double sided. Invisible should be on. That is a checkbox which indicates whether or not we can see the light itself. So unless you want a giant white plane in the sky, definitely have the sky checked. Um, everything else looks good. And let's start with that. So that came out pretty good. One light and I'm fairly happy with this render. But it can get even better. 
I threw a V-Ray Sun in there and messed with the settings until I was happy with it. I really didn't change much. I just lowered the intensity multiplier and the size multiplier until it wasn't um, completely overblown. The way V-Ray Sun works is the higher the sun, the more it simulates a noon setting, so deeper shadows, brighter hot spots. The lower it is on the horizon, the softer the settings, and the more of a sunset-like tint there is. Because our environment and our uh, global illumination is set up to more of a noon setting, I wanted to create that sort of scene. We can easily change this with just changing our HDRI map and the angle of our sun. I'm fairly happy with the lighting from this angle, but I'm going to go through to all my other cameras and just double check that I really like the lighting in my scene before I move on to the textures. So here we've got camera angle 1, which is way too dark. What I did to compensate for this is I went in and I put a, um, a V-Ray light that was not quite as big as each vomitory in the entrance way. Um, I made sure that they were instances. When you're making V-Ray lights, if you copy them, then they will add to each other's light and it will multiply. And if you instance them, then it will be as if uh, the same light source is sharing different facets and pouring through different holes so the light source will be continual instead of exponential. I also added a hallway light if it will select and I set that to a very low multiplier of 0.2 and removed cast shadows and added double-sided and made sure the invisible was on. That uh, created a ambient fill light within here and as you'll see in a second it really lightened the scene up in such a way that it complemented the background. Now we can get into the fun part of V-Ray. I did a render with the textures on and I realized that the light is way too bright. So I went in and I changed the sun's intensity to a multiplier of 0 0.02. Next step is to go in and to turn our override material off under the global switches and start playing with our textures and converting the ones we have into V-Ray.